the Azores. Located between America and Europe and set amid the Atlantic Ocean are nine islands, each with its own special landscape. Unique treasure islands created by the vagaries of nature. Sao Miguel, gateway to the Azores. This, the largest and most densely populated island of the Azores, was named after St. Michael as it was discovered on his feast day. Steaming geysers, the opulent green of the tropics, as well as monasteries and settlements. The island's capital of Ponta Delgada is situated within a beautiful bay on the south coast. Its spacious town square and the remains of the former city gate welcome visitors. This is also the location of the main Matriz church that was dedicated to the city's patron saint in the middle of the 16th century. The Santo Cristo Church is part of the Esperanza Convent. Its interior is sumptuously decorated with gilded wood carvings as well as precious azulejos. The nearby Igreja de São José is part of the Franciscan Monastery that was established by monks from Villafranca in 1525 following an earthquake. The massive Baroque facade of the unfinished church of the Jesuit College is one of the most striking buildings that is situated in the upper section of the old town. The municipal park was created as a private garden in the 19th century and was named after the first pineapple grower on the island, Antonio Borges. The market displays an impressive cross-section of all that both the land and sea of this region have to offer. The port is the largest in the Azores, with a protective key wall, wide quayside and city skyline. Northeast of the city is a pineapple plantation in which seasonal growth phase can be observed in large greenhouses. Lagoa owes its name to a lagoon which extends in front of the Santa Cruz Church. Here there's bathing and relaxation. In addition to fruit, tea, sweet potatoes and tobacco are also grown here. Villafranca do Campo soon became the original capital of the island. In the island's tropical volcanic landscape, small waterfalls often fill natural pools that are heated by hot springs, perfect for a quick bathe. From the vantage point of the crater's rim, the beautiful Lagoa de Fogo can be seen. This tranquil lake of fire fills a crater of around six kilometers in diameter. The idyllic crater lake, Furnas, is surrounded by forests. In these calderas, boiling hot water from over a hundred meters below penetrates the surface. From bubbling mud rise sulfurous vapors. Amazingly, microorganisms have been discovered here that can survive in boiling water. The north coast is of a very different character. Rugged cliffs plunge into the sea. At the beginning of the 19th century, the first tea plants arrived in the Azores in a somewhat roundabout way. The Emperor of China sent tea plants which came to São Miguel via Brazil. Caldeira das Sete Cicadas is the most fascinating collapsed crater in the Azores. 
lush vegetation that resulted from a series of landslides surround many of the lakes. The Blue Lake of Lagoa Azul and the Green Lake of Lagoa Verde are the two largest virgin landscapes in the region. Turchiala is located in the middle of the archipelago. Here both culture and history are in focus and also the rich green of the shoreline. The island was the third to be discovered in the archipelago and was therefore named Tercera, meaning third. Angra do Heroísmo is the island's capital and also a world heritage site. In the 15th and 16th centuries, this city and its natural harbour were an important port of call for numerous trading ships. A junction for three continents. And Pacos de Conchelio, City Hall, indicates the city's former prosperity. In 1776, Domantal de Almada transformed a Jesuit convent into a palace. This, the largest cathedral in the Azores, was influenced by Spanish design. It is the Igreja do Santissimo Salvatore da Sé Cathedral. Apalachio is the residence of the Betancourt family, which provided many governors of the Canary Islands from the end of the 17th century. Angra is a city of churches, monasteries, palaces and manor houses. Each building was restored following a devastating earthquake in 1980. The Convento Sao Gonzalo was founded in 1545. It's the oldest and largest of the nine monasteries that once existed on the island. In the centre is the Jardim Duca da Ticciera, a well laid out garden with tangled pathways, fountains and an abundance of flowers. Today many tourists visit the island and the once untamed coast has now become a sun worshippers paradise. And there's excitement. Men await bulls in the alleys. Each bull has a rope tied around its neck in order to facilitate capture. Tertiera is also of volcanic origin. The unspoiled mountain scenery almost totally hides the island's three major volcanic systems of craters and caves. The descent into the Calgado Cavao cave in the island's interior resembles a descent into hell. Settlements are usually located on the coast, such as Cuatro Riberas. The island's coastline is often rugged and difficult to access. The land breaks off abruptly to the sea, and thoughts of the region's history come alive. To the east of the island of Tercera is Serra de Cume, a giant crater about 10 kilometers wide. The interior of the crater consists of fields and pastures in which dairy cows graze peacefully. San Sebastião is probably the oldest settlement on the island. Here, the first Portuguese settlers set foot ashore. Threatened by pirate attack, the people built fortified churches decorated in Gothic splendor. Graciosa, the lovely, the charming, the second smallest island in the Azores, calm and tranquil. Scattered throughout the island are several small, whitewashed villages. Santa Cruz de Graciosa is the island's principal town. 
In the middle of the town, framed by mansions, are two large water basins. In earlier times, one of them served as a water supply for the locals. The other was for cattle. The Matriz de Santa Cruz church dominates the town with its white facade and dark basalt rock. The Manuel design is clearly to be seen in the interior on both the stone carvings and masterful azulejos. The mansions of the 18th and 19th centuries are predominantly single story and decorated with interesting window frames and pretty balconies. The first overlord was Pedro Correa de Cunha, a brother-in-law of Christopher Columbus. The fate of Graciosa has always been closely linked with the other islands. Thus, no independent development took place here. To the south of Graciosa is the tiny port of Praia, with a sandy beach in front of the houses. Although tourists are hardly seen here, the local residents enjoy both sea and sun. There's little of real interest here. Apart from the St. Martha's Church. In the southeast of the island, an artificial tunnel leads to a breathtaking view. A caldera that measures around 1,200 meters in diameter. The crater is partly wooded and partly used as pasture land. But this peaceful scene is deceptive. A volcano lies below. Next on the agenda, mysterious steps that travel to Hades, the Ferna do Enchofre Cave. Next, down to a unique phenomenon of nature, a former volcanic vent. A world of darkness in which pungent fumes of sulphur fill the air. On the northern border of Serra das Fontes is the village of Fontes, which maintains one of the island's last 30 windmills, whose design has been compared with those in Flanders, Belgium. The easiest way to travel from Graciosa to the island of Fial is by way of a short flight on the Azores airline. Fial, the Blue Island. One of the most visited islands in the archipelago and whose marina is well known throughout the world. Fayal also offers spectacular nature, with a rocky coastline and volcanoes. Huota is the island's capital and since 1976 has also been the seat of the Azores Parliament. In 1466, when Flemish Josse van Hutere founded the settlement in grand style, the Nossa Senhora das Angustias church was built by his wife. The Franciscans originally established this convent on the coast, but as a result of pillage and storm, subsequently moved into the town where they stayed until their eventual expulsion. The Matriz de São Salvador church was originally built by the Jesuits. Inside, magnificent Jesuit Baroque has been well preserved. The church was elevated to the status of a parish church in 1825. The port of Orza has always been a stopover for ships crossing the Atlantic. Later, also for seaplanes. 
With colourful illustrations on the mole, skippers from all over the world have been immortalised before continuing their voyage across the Atlantic. Each visitor to File has only one main destination, the central point of the island with its large caldera. From the edge, there's a splendid view across the beautiful crater, 400 meters deep, with a diameter of two kilometers and a swamp. The caldera originated due to a huge explosion thousands of years ago, during which tons of pumice stone was ejected from the crater. At that time, the Capalinos volcano erupted and shook the entire island. This rugged and hostile landscape originated due to powerful volcanic eruptions that began on the 27th of September, 1957, at 8 o'clock in the morning. The foothills of the island's southern coastline feature a brightly shining mighty rock of hard trackage stone, the Morro de Castello Branco. Lapped by the strong waves of the Atlantic, relatively few visitors come here. From file, a neighboring island is visible, Pico, an island with a shining snow-covered mountain and 106 volcanic brothers and sisters. The ferry is without doubt the fastest and easiest way to travel from one island to the next. And yet another world set in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Pico is the second largest of the Azores Islands and highlights the hardships of the life of the islanders. It's a fascinating place. Life is tranquil here. Even the arrival of the ferry boats is quite peaceful. And welcome cafes look quite tempting. The island's main town is Madaldeña do Pico, a harbour town. The first settlers were plagued by famine, pirate attack and volcanic eruption. Then the fishing industry began, followed by viniculture on a grand scale. Much prosperity came from the Pico wine that was produced in Orta, where the barrels of file were exported to as far as Russia. The island was first settled in 1460 by Lages de Pico. Here, the first settlers came, attracted by the sheltered bay. Larges was for centuries the center of whale hunting. Today too, we are searching for whales, but not for hunting, only to observe and take photos. The Dos Barrieros Museum features the brutal history of whaling. The killing of whales was a bloody business, sometimes also for the hunters themselves. A romantic, scenic road winds its way from Lages and through the highlands to San Roque. From each direction, Pico is the focal point. The highlands are a protected area and small crater lakes nestle idyllically amid green pastures. On the north side of the island, Sarok is the second oldest settlement. A tranquil village on a hill with a harbour that has become the centre of commerce.
Here lived the families of those who, until 1984, were employed in a local whale processing factory. In 1946, in Caias do Pico, a factory was founded which is now a museum. It provides a good insight into the processing of the pot whale. The Franciscan monastery of São Pedro do Alcantara originated in 1718. The monks were eventually forced to leave Lages due to volcanic eruptions in the south of the island. On the north coast, Cacharo was abandoned by its inhabitants during a particularly frightening eruption. Fearful of another one, they decided not to return. Flores, the flower island. A wildly romantic paradise at the end of the world pure nature amid the Atlantic Ocean. A colorful, almost virginal splash of volcanic rock at the far end of Europe. Santa Cruz on the east tip is the island's small principal town, sandwiched between the airport runway and the sea. The Folklore Museum is housed within a former Franciscan monastery. Here there are old agricultural implements and household items. An interesting overview on life in Flores. The island is wild and wonderful at the same time. And the various green hues enchant the landscape and cleverly conceal the signs of volcanic activity. The plant world owes its lushness to the weather. One minute sunshine, suddenly a brief rain shower, then the mist clears and the landscape blossoms once again. Lagoa Rasa and Lagoa Funda are two of the seven Flores lakes. They fill craters of volcanic origin, often only in winter. Just a narrow mountain ridge separates the Lagoa Negra, a dark crater lake where bushes and trees grow almost into the water. Above the Ribiera Grande is Cuara, once a small village whose inhabitants left for America. In the 1960s, a Portuguese couple named Silva bought what remained and created a small and exclusive tourist attraction here. The whole west coast looks dramatic and unpredictable. Again and again, steep rock walls and waterfalls that plunge down hundreds of meters. Unique and breathtaking natural wonders. and bizarre rock formations such as the basalt pillars of Roca dos Boros, which seem to support a huge rock wall like the pipes of a mighty organ. This small village lies at the end of Fayazinha's fertile basin, which flows along the west coast. High above the sea, the village has long been isolated from the outside world, a fact that is still true today. Wedged between the craggy rocks of the steep coast, Fajia Grande is situated on a tiny coastal plain. With their authentic nature and harmony, the Azores Islands are still waiting to be discovered. A paradise set in eternal blue. Islands that hold the secrets of nature and an abundance of local pride. Evergreen jewels set amid the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs>